Hello everybody, Mr. Justin here with the Hernando County Public Library System. Thank you so much for joining us for week two of our summer reading program, Imagine Your Story. We are here every Tuesday and you can always find us online on our website or our Facebook page with some new stories every single week and this week we are reading all about folk tales. Now folk tales are, are stories that are told usually orally through through people talking, which is what we're going to do today. We're not going to use any books. I'm going to tell all of today's tales orally from all around the world. And so these are stories that are passed down from generation to generation that maybe some elderly people in the society will tell the younger people and they pass it on through the oral tradition. So that's what we're going to do today is we're going to tell some folk tales um, from around the world. And the first one we're going to do is we're going to talk about the enormous turnip from Russia. And so we have our little thing right here and oh I see the tur turnip poking out right here and this is our old man. One day an old man planted a turnip in the ground. The turnip grew and grew and grew. It grew to be an enormous turnip. The old man wanted to pull the turnip out of the ground one day. So he got there and he pulled and pulled and pulled <gasps> but the turnip wouldn't come out of the ground. So he called over his wife, the old woman. And so the old woman took hold of the man. The old man took hold of the turnip and they pulled and pulled and pulled and it still wouldn't come out. So the old woman called over to her granddaughter. And the granddaughter took hold of the old woman. The old woman took hold of the old man. The old man took hold of the enormous turnip and they pulled and pulled and pulled and pulled and it still didn't come out. So the granddaughter called over the dog. Ruff, ruff. So the dog took hold of the granddaughter. The granddaughter took hold of the old woman. The old woman took hold of the old man. And the old man took hold of the turnip and they pulled and pulled and pulled and pulled and it still wouldn't come out. So the dog called over to, you'll never guess who, the cat. So let's put the cat right here. And the cat took hold of the dog. The dog took hold of the granddaughter. The granddaughter took hold of the old woman. And the old woman took hold of the old man. And the old man took hold of the turnip. And they pulled and pulled and pulled and pulled and, and it still didn't come out. So, so they didn't know what to do at that moment a little mouse came by and the little mouse was like, hey, I'll help. But they all looked at the little mouse and they started to laugh. <laughs> you can't help us. You're so small and tiny. But the mouse is like, we don't know unless we try. So at that moment, the mouse took hold of the cat. The cat took hold of the dog. The dog took hold of the granddaughter. The granddaughter took hold of the old woman. The old woman took hold of the old man. And of course, the old man took hold of the turnip. And they pulled, 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 and pop! Finally, out came the enormous turnip. And that evening, you better believe it, they had a fantastic feast of roasted turnips. And that is the end of the enorm enormous turnip. There we go, very good. So like I said, today we're doing uh, folk tales with the oral tradition all around the world, but I decided we're gonna stop here in our country, the United States of America, to tell one of my favorite stories. If you've been to one of my story times, you may have seen this book before, but we're gonna do it today instead of using the book. I'm gonna read it out loud with my little prop, including this little guy right here and this. Oh, look how big his mouth is. He is a wide mouth frog. Look how big and wide that mouth is. And he was a slimy green frog with a very big wide mouth. And that frog, he drove everyone bonkers. He was always jumping around, going up to others, others and shouting, who are you? Well, one morning when he woke up, he decided he wanted to find out what everyone else liked to eat. So he, he hopped out of his frog pond and went straight to the zoo to bother all those other animals. So the first animal he met was the elephant. Who are you? What do you eat? I'm an elephant. I eat plants. Well, I'm a white mouth frog and I eat flies. Okay, good for you. So he goes hopping off and he runs into the giraffe. Who are you? What do you eat? I'm a giraffe. I eat leaves. Well, I'm a white mouth frog and I eat flies. 
and he bounced off. And Frog was a little perturbed by that, but that's all right. Or sorry, El Giraffe was. And so Frog hopped off and he ran into the furry brown mouse. Who are you? What do you eat? I'm a mouse. I eat crunchy seeds and juicy berries. Well, I'm a white mouse frog and I eat flies. He goes hopping off to find another friend and he runs into the blue feathered bird, kind of the blue gray feathered bird. Who are you? What do you eat? I am a bird. I eat wiggly worms. Well, I'm a white mouth frog and I eat flies. He goes hopping along when finally he runs into a big, enormous, green crocodile. Uh-oh. Oh, look at those sharp teeth. There's our crocodile. And he runs into the crocodile. Who are you? What do you eat? And the sly, hungry crocodile had a smile on his face. And he said, well, I'm a crocodile, of course. And I love to eat. What do you think he likes to eat? Wide mouth frogs. And at that moment, the wide mouth frog suddenly closed his wide mouth and made his lips as small as he could. <gasps> well, I've never heard of those before. Nope, nope, never at all. I'm a small mouth frog. I gotta go, goodbye. Oh. And at that moment, the wide mouth frog turned around and jumped away from the crocodile as fast as he could. And after that moment, he always remembered that sometimes it's better just to keep your big wide mouth shut sometimes. And that is the story of our wide mouthed frog. There we go. There we go. Very good. Very good. So we had our enormous turn up. We've got our wide mouth frog. And now we are going to go back to Europe, where we were with Russia a little bit ago. And we're going to do a folk tale that you can find versions of this from all over different uh, European countries, including uh, France and the United Kingdom. Uh, today we are going to visit Sweden, and this is called The Three Wishes. Here we go. Long ago, in the lush forest of Sweden, a poor woodcutter lived with his wife. The husband worked very hard for so very little money. And no matter how many trees he cut down and sold, it never seemed to be enough. Because of this, they lived a very simple life. And often, they went hungry. One day, when the man was out searching for just the right tree to cut down, he found a great old oak. He was convinced it would bring in enough money so he and his wife could, could eat for a whole week. And just as the woodcutter was about to swing his axe, he heard a voice calling from above. Stop! When he looked up, he saw a little wood nymph. This surprised the man. He had never seen a wood nymph before. The nymph pleaded with the man to leave the oak tree alone. Please don't cut down the tree. It's my home. I had taken care of it for over a hundred years. And so because he was a good man, the woodcutter agreed to let the tree continue to grow and thrive. Well, thank you so much for saving my tree. In return, I'm going to grant you three wishes, said the wood nymph. Well, the man didn't really believe in magic at all, so he just went on about his own business. He traveled deeper and deeper into the forest to locate other trees that he could cut down for profit. But by the end of the day, he was so exhausted. Oh, he worked so hard, he forgot all about the wood nymph and those three wishes. He went home where his wife, let's put our table here, and we have the wife, and his wife placed a bowl of potato soup onto the table. And there was stale brown bread too. Not thinking, the man sighed and he said, oh, I wish I had a big juicy sausage. And lo and behold, a big juicy sausage appeared out of nowhere in front of him. Both the man and his wife were very surprised. But then the man remembered his encounter with the wood nymph. So he told his wife all about it. When she learned that they were granted three wishes and he just wasted one on a simple sausage, she became angry. Why didn't he wish for gold or jewels or a large farm or enough for us to eat for the rest of our lives? The wife berated her husband for making such a foolish wish. She became so angry, she wished the sausage would hang from her the end of her husband's nose. As soon as she spoke the words, the sausage moved from the kitchen table and went 
to the end of his nose and there it is hanging out from his nose it hung no matter how hard the two adults tried to remove the sausage it would not come off there it is on his nose look at that big sausage now because of the wife's foolish words the couple had just one wish left they discussed their options they could still wish for gold or jewels a large farm or enough to eat for the rest of their lives but if they wish for any of those that man would have that sausage hanging off his nose for the rest of his life what to do what to do well it didn't take all that long for the woodcutter and his wife to realize what their third wish just had to be together they wished for the sausage to come off the man's news nose as soon as they said the word the sausage fell off and landed right back on to the table. They never did get any gold or jewels or a large farm, but they did have enough to eat for supper for that night. Oh, they got to eat the sausage. So if you ever meet a wood nymph or an elf or a troll and you're granted three wishes, just remember the story we told you today. Do not, do not waste your wishes like the woodcutter and his wife did. And that is the end. There we go, there we go, and that is the story of the woodcutter, and they wasted the wishes they were given to them. But let's go ahead and go to China, where we have the empty pot. So one day, the emperor of China, he was getting very old, he had no children, he wanted to have a contest to name an heir. Well, he loved planting plants, so he announced to all the children around the country that he was gonna have a contest, that they were to come to the palace on a special day to get a seed. And every boy would get a seed. They'd go home and they would try to grow the biggest plant they could with the seed. And whoever had the plant that pleased the emperor the most would become the new emperor of China. So all the boys went to the palace, they all got their little seed, and they took their seed home. Well, this is the story of a little boy named June. Now, June was the best gardener in his village. He could grow melons and bok choy and snow peas like you would never believe. Like his neighbors would love his, his vegetables that he would always grow for them. And so he took the seed and he wanted to make sure that he held on to it tight. So he gripped his fist to hold on to it tight, but not too tight to crush the seed and to break it. So he got home and he got a pot. He found the best soil. He put the soil in. He took his seed, he dug it in, he put more soil on top, and he made sure to water it every day. And he watered that seed every single day. But it didn't grow into a plant. I did it, he heard one day. He ran outside and saw one of his neighbors had a sprout in their plant. And then the next day, another neighbor had a sprout and another and another. And as time went on, these plants grew bigger and bigger and bigger. But June's didn't grow at all. It never sprouted. It just stayed like this the entire time. He didn't know what was wrong because he surely he was a better gardener than all his friends. So he went home one day and saw it still hadn't grown or sprouted. So he went ahead, took it out of the pot. He got a brand new, nicer pot. He put nicer soil inside. He took the seed, put it back in, planted it again, put it in the ground, and he started watering it some more. And he waited and waited and waited. And it never grew. Still didn't grow. And all his friends, all the other boys in the village, their plants were growing enormous leaves, enormous stalks. They were getting so big. But his still didn't grow. Six months later, it was time to go back to the palace for all the plants to be judged by the emperor. June looked at all the pots that were, being, uh, that were being taken to the palace, and his still hadn't grown. There was still no plant in it. Well, all the other boys, they needed their parents to hold the plants and to prop them up because the plants had grown so large when they all lined up. And June was very embarrassed because he's a great gardener. But his parents said, at least you tried, June. And June's like, okay, I guess we have to go. So they all lined up with their pots holding it like this. The emperor looked by one by one. Every time he passed the boy in their enormous plant, he gave a frown and a scowl. He came to June, June's little plant, and he scowled even more. And then he said, what is this? You brought me an empty pot? And June started to cry. And June's like, yeah, I tried my hardest. I used my best pot. I used my best soil. I tried, I watered every day. I tried, I tried, I tried. And the emperor stopped. And the emperor said, you know what? I don't know where all these other boys got their seeds because 
we had them cooked and there's no way they could grow anything from these seeds. And June found out at that moment that because he was honest and used the seed that he was given from the palace, that he had won the contest and he became the next emperor of China. And that is the story of June and the Empty Pot. We're gonna do one more folk tale today before we talk about the craft, which is gonna be related to that. And with this one, we are actually gonna to go to Africa for our last story. And we're gonna meet Anansi the Spider. And this is called, Why the Spider Has Eight Long Legs. So Anansi the Spider, oh look at that, that's not what we think of about spiders, right? Anansi the Spider was a great trickster. And while he always had eight legs, they didn't always look like they do now. Once upon a time, they were small and sturdy, rather than long and thin. And Anansi was always lazy. Instead of cooking his own dinner, he liked to visit his neighbors and sample all their meals. One evening, he smelled boiling carrots. <laughs> And he went to his friend Rabbit's house. Hmm, those carrots smell delicious, said Anansi. Oh, Anansi, what a pleasant surprise, said Rabbit. I'm afraid they're not done yet, but you're quite welcome to stay. Anansi lied to his friend and said, I wish I could, but I'm so very busy. But wait, I know. I'm going to make a web and tie one around my leg. You can hold on to the other end and give a strong pull when the carrots are ready, and I'll come back to join you for your meal. Rabbit agreed to the plan, and Anansi went on his way. As he left, he picked up the smell of beans come, being cooked, and his tummy rumbled in front of Monkey's house. He stopped, and that's where the smell was coming. Would you like some beans with me, said Monkey. They're almost done. Oh, if only I could, Monkey. I've got so many things to do, but wait, I know. We'll tie a web around one of my legs, and I'll give you the other end. Just pull it when the beans are ready, and I'll be right there to eat with you. Monkey agrees, and Anansi left. He laughed to himself the whole time that his friends are falling for his joke that he doesn't have to help them cook. But next, he smelled some boiling potatoes coming from Hog's house. Hi, Anansi, said Hog. I'm making potatoes right now. Would you like to eat them with me when they're done? Well, if only I could, Hog, said Anansi, but I've got many things to do. But wait, I know, I'm going to make a web and tie one, one end around my leg, and you can hold the other. Just give it a pull when the potatoes are ready, and I'll come back to you. Hog agreed, and Anansi went on his way. He continued on like that until he had a web tied to each of his eight legs. He went to all his friends. He went to tortoise, and mouse, and squirrel, and elephant, and he decided he was tired from visiting all his friends, so he lay down in the sun to take a nap. But wait, all of a sudden, he was awoken by a tug at one of his legs. He wondered which meal was ready first, and as he was on his way, there was another tug, and another, and another, and another, and another, and all the tugs happened at the same time, and his legs went, Wah! and they grew out of proportion. And from then on, Anansi walked on eight thin, long legs. Here he is, you ready? Here is Anansi now, because we had the webs around him were all tugged at the same time, causing his legs to get long and thin instead of short and stubby like they used to. And that is why the spider has eight long legs. There we go, and that is the end of our story. So we visited all around the world today. We went to Russia, to USA, to Sweden, to uh, China, and we ended up in Africa. And today's craft today, and remember, you can pick this up at your local branch. Uh, starting today, you can ask for a craft bag and they'll be able to give you, is gonna be your own Anansi spider that you get to weave right there. And so in your bag, you'll have your spider right here. You'll have your little strips, and so you can just take each strip off and kind of weave it through the spider. Uh, you might have to cut some of them to get a little smaller, but in the end, it's gonna look a little bit like this. And there is the Anansi spider that you can weave. So you can take your weaving spider. So thank you so much for joining us this week. I hope you enjoyed all of our folk tales. We will be back next week with another video in a craft. And next week is all about royalty, royal stories with kings, queens, knights, princesses, and we'll see you later. Goodbye, everyone.